Hello and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the engineering and technical manager here at RegoFix USA. One of the most common issues people have when it comes to assembling their tool holders is, well, how tight do I make this pull stud? Now, you can go to a lot of different sources and you will get a variety of different answers on, is it 80 foot pounds all the way down to say 40 or 35 foot pounds? But what is it really and what happens as you tighten this pull stud into your tool holder? So let's take a few moments, let's go over to the workbench and let's show you what happens as you tighten this pull stud and over tighten this pull stud. What results can you expect to see in your CNC machine? We've moved over to our workbench with our Torco block installed and we are going to be using an ER20 Cat40 tool holder that we've already assembled. Uh, it has a half inch pin in it and what we are going to do is we're going to take a couple different measurements. We are going to measure the pull stud hand tight, just barely in there, and then 20 foot pounds, which is about halfway to the recommended 36. Then we'll measure 36, 50, and we will go all the way up to 80 for the last reading. And the reason we are going up to 80 is, well, that used to be the pull stud recommendation years ago. But as the spindles have changed, well, so has that torque rating. So let's take some measurements. Let's put our Cat40 tool holder into our torque block. Then we are gonna take our standard red ring from the torque block that gives readings in foot pounds or in Newton meters. In this case, we're gonna use foot pounds and the little hole in the ring goes on the pin to make sure you're aligned properly. And we are going to not really worry about the setting for this first one because this is hand tight. I'm gonna take my standard pull stud and that is hand tight. So we're gonna measure that now. Okay, so here is the, uh, the hand tight version. This will be our baseline. So put this into our zero spindle and just give it a quick measurement. So right around the five and a half to six microns, which for a standard ER collet assembly is not that bad. So now let's torque this up and get the other readings. Now that we've done our hand tight measurement, Let's go ahead and set our indicator to pick up 20 foot-pounds and let's tighten our pull stud. And 20 foot-pounds and that's it. So let's measure that. So here we are with 20 foot-pounds and very, very little difference, which is kind of what we would expect right around that five and a half to six microns. So now let's go to the recommended torque value. Now we are at the recommended torque value of 36 foot-pounds. And again, very, very little change. I can actually see about two microns difference, but that's okay because you're gonna have the draw bar pulling on this, which will help correct some of that. But not a lot of difference, but you can see going from hand tight just to 36 foot-pounds, I've seen a two micron difference change in TIR. Now we are at 50 foot-pounds, so we are higher than the recommended value. And we are seeing it actually jump a little bit. You can see how it has a large jump in it. Uh, TIR still isn't that bad. It's right around that six micron range, but it's, it's a lot more touchy um, as I'm rotating it. So we're starting to see a little bit of that deformation. Now we have the old torque value of 80 foot-pounds um, on, our, on our stud. Um, what I wanna point out is just grabbing the base and just barely wiggling back and forth, you can see it, it's jumping considerably. So we have definitely deformed the bottom of the taper. 
and, and you can see it, it just jumps everywhere at, as it's going. Um, it's picking up about 11 microns uh, total swing, but it's, it's really, really uh, unstable. So we definitely have uh, created a bulge at the bottom of the taper. And that's why a lot of customers, when they don't think about the assembly and they just put a high torque value on there, they don't realize it goes all the way up through the spindle, through the tool holder, to the cutting tool, and can cause TIR uh, problems, surface finish issues, and even fretting and spindle damage by over torquing that pole stud. Now that we've gone through our, our little experiment showing what happens as you over torque uh, the retention knob or the pull stud, the question might be, well, why does that happen? Well, let's think about the mechanics of this. All steep taper holders have a cone, which has a flat spot at the top. I have a retention knob or a pull stud that has a flat on it as well. And when I go through and I tighten this in, I end up with the flat of the pole stud pushing down on the narrowest portion of the cone. It's pretty obvious that that's what we have in our assembly. But what's going on? So as I take my cone and I push on the top of it, it has to deform. And it creates a little bulge. And usually that bulge is where the threads engage down to where the flap is on the retention knob or the pull stud. So it's squeezing that material. Well, because it's a cone, it creates a little bulge. And because spindles have increased in rigidity and the amount of taper that they hold on to, well, that bulge is now at the very base of your spindle and your spindle's trying to hold on to an area that's too big. So now I have an interference fit at the base of my tool holder, causing TIR problems because the front side of my, of my taper is no longer making proper contact. It's being allowed to move or rock inside of my spindle. So that's kind of the basics of the mechanics of what's going on. The good news is, is if you find that you have over torqued your pull studs, it's not a big deal. Uh, the material will return to its normal state. Just pop the pull stud loose, go to our catalog, get the recommended value for the steep taper series you are using, and make sure you follow that throughout all of your assembly process. If you have any questions at all about pull stud torque, TIR, run out, or any other issues you might be having with your tool holders, please feel free to reach out to your Fix technical team. We are here to help.